Hello and welcome. So I'm re-recording this for the third time because it keeps going out of sync. Um, I realised I think it's to do with the speed of my uh, camera so I've turned it down. Hopefully that works. Anyway, moving on. So uh, I was in Carla's Live, the reseller, um, mass reseller live and um, I, they were talking about embarrassing stories so I told one of mine and it seemed to go down really well <laughs> um, so I thought why not put a few including that one for those who didn't see uh, a few of those stories together into a video because um, although they were embarrassing at the time I'm not no longer embarrassed I think it was funny um, so let's go for that eh? so I'll start back at the earliest one obviously this isn't all of the embarrassing moments I've had because for some reason I'm good at them <laughs> but these are the ones I'm, I'm thinking of right now so um, in the late 80s I was about 14 I'd gone down to the beach we don't live that far well at the time we lived the other end of Sunderland so it was like half an hour away but you know um, so we went down to the beach and we all decided we were going to go in the sea so we took our shoes off and coats and things and we left them by you know just on the beach near the water so we all went on in having so much fun didn't really think about it and after so long when we came out the tide had come in and the tide it like soaked everyone's thing but being me I had my stuff nearer the water than everyone else did so my shoes and my coat um, I managed to get my coat and I managed to find one shoe but I couldn't find the other one so I was like where's my shoe where's my shoe to my friends and I was like oh my god my mom's gonna kill me la 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 do you know as you do and they were all thinking it's funny because that's what your friends do to you, don't they? <laughs> well, some were thinking it was funny and some were trying to help me find it. And then one of my friends spotted it quite far out in the sea because it was a size 8 caught shoe, white caught shoe that was. <laughs> because, yeah, that's what I had. <laughs> that was what was cool back then. Um, so this, this caught shoe was too far out to, to go and get. So one of my other friends was like, oh, look, you've gave a seagull a home and stuff. And I was like mortified, like fuming and like finding them not funny and thinking how on earth and what I was going to say because I couldn't get my shoe back and I couldn't really go home with one shoe. So I decided that I'd be better off with no shoes. That would give us, I'd have less attention on us as long as no one looked at my feet whereas if I was walking like this with one shoe one caught shoe they would notice <laughs> so I had to get on the bus with no shoes I managed to like go into the first like seat with another seat in front so that no one could see so I was sitting there you know I'm on the bus get like thinking oh my god what am I going to say if I say someone stole them shall I say someone pinched them off is so uh, I, you know and I'm thinking all these things in my head so that I don't get wrong in the end I just told her the truth and uh, yeah I did get wrong and um, she made me wear my other ones my less cool shoes for a while but you know that's what happens I guess <laughs> But it wasn't funny at the time, and obviously it is now. So the next one, um, me and my friend uh, was at were at her house, and were like with two boys that we really liked. And we decided uh, we'd been doing stupid dance routines as you do when you're young, and making them up and whatever, and we showed. Them the dance routine and well, we're going to show them anyway so it was um oh, MacArthur's Park is it MacArthur's Park by Donna Summer I think that was the song someone could correct us if I'm wrong but it used to go uh it's raining it's pouring uh, I can't remember it. Da, 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 da. 
No sunshine, no moonlight. Well, anyway, it started off slow, so there was ever slow bits, and then it used to get fast, and it would be like, Enough is enough is enough, I can't go on. No, I can't sing. Anyway, so the bit at the beginning, we used to do this thing where I would go like that, and then like that with the other hand, and then squat down, right? So we did that bit, and that bit, and as we squatted down, she let out this massive fart. Like, massive, but like, echoed for days. I mean, it was ridiculous, like... And I immediately went bright red, even though it wasn't me. Um, it's a chaggy, but it still wasn't me. Um, and she just laughed, and I was bright red, feeling embarrassed for her. And they were like looking sort of like other ways type of thing. And she blew me. And of course they believed her because like I was, you know, looking embarrassed. <laughs> Which she then thought was more funny. But yeah, so it wasn't funny. Let, let, let's just say we didn't see them again after that. But I did get a um, Heart of Ch uh, Chicago. Uh, I was at the Heart of Chicago, is that album called? I think so. Anyway, I did get that on tape because he gave us it just before all that happened. So, got something out of it, didn't I? <laughs> um, anyway, next one after that was... So, I'd liked this boy for ages, he was Carl Simon, and he, he always, he was very shy and he was sweet, but I used to just, like, the lads used to be get like, oh, well, you know what they like, that sort of thing, and I always thought, oh, anyway, he asked me out via someone else, like you do when you're a kid, I think I was 15. 15, 16, something like that. Anyway, I was at home on the day I was supposed to meet him. As you do, starting to think, oh, he's not going to turn up, he's not going to turn up, and all that. So, but then there's the other part of us is get like, he will, he will. So, putting music on, blasting it all, like getting ready, you know. Um, I spent like three hours in the bath or whatever and washed my hair and, um, you know, it was a full inset, did the makeup, full lippy, you know, all completely ready. I was meeting him at six o'clock in, in the town centre or city centre. And uh, I left to go there and as I was walking towards it, like, I couldn't see him. So I was walking towards, but like, you had to go down slightly to be able to see once you turned the corner. So I was walking there towards him and I was like, freaking out thinking oh my god he's not gonna be there oh they're all gonna be there and they're just gonna laugh at us you know like all these things going through your hair and uh, going through your hair all these things going through your head there was a, like afro comb going through my hair <laughs> and a hell of a lot of, of uh, hairspray that reminds us of another story when my hair went up in flames but I won't go into that um <laughs> it wasn't quite in flames it just had a lot of people smacking us on my head because someone stood behind us and decided to light their fag and it set my hair alight. Yeah, it was a bit of, bit of a smoke smell, but that was it. So, <laughs> where was I? So yeah, so I was walking along to meet him <coughs> and I was so nervous, <coughs> excited too, obviously. I had butterflies. And I turned the corner and as I did, I seen him and he smiled at us, but it was kind of like, like that. I kind of looked down, smile a bit. And I was like, yes, in my head, I was getting like, yes, he's here. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And he's by himself, yes, another yes, kind of thing. And then um, I went across the road. I was about halfway across the road when I felt something splat down one side of my face. And it was literally like a slap splat kind of thing. And it just dripped down as it, as it like sort of went and hit my top lip. And there was this horrible fishy minging smell and I kind of wiped a bit and obviously realised that a bird hit a seagull not just a bird a seagull who like produces so much shit as never know had literally shit all down my face and he was standing there just looking absolutely horrified like uh, he was looking at my face and kind of looking horrified and I could just feel 
I was obviously horrified and I could feel the tears stinging my eyes and, and I, I literally spun on my car shoes back in the day and um, ran all the way home all right maybe not all the way home I ran to the bus station but I could have made it more dramatic and stuff I literally wiped it all off onto my jacket I had this um, it was I had a jacket that had turned up sleeves so they were like three quarters and the the print was like the Prince of Wales check print uh, I love that jacket um so yeah we I ran basically home on the bus and then <laughs> and then I get in the house on like on my way I'd like I wiped it all off get in the house ran up the stairs as soon as the door was opened ran in my room slammed the door jumped on the bed and cried my eyes out like it was my life was over and uh cried my eyes out for about two weeks and then i was also worrying that he was going to tell people and it would be all over and everyone would be like taking the piss and calling calling his bird shitty lane or something <laughs> uh, um I don't know shitty lips or something I don't know there would have been something and he he didn't say anything and I seen him about three weeks later at a party of my friends and we both kind of came around different corners and bumped into each other and we both get like uh, uh, and then we both went the other way <laughs> I just didn't know what to say um yeah but bless him he didn't say it out but that was horrific like you know how you cry for about two weeks and then you're over it because someone else is uh, spiking your interest <laughs> we were fickle weren't we? proper fickle <laughs> um okay it's been about when I was 17 yeah about 17 I had the most horrible teeth um, I had two teeth that came down from here that I pushed the teeth that were here back and these teeth a little bit forward so I had the most horrible teeth and um, whenever I laughed I used to laugh like that because I was so embarrassed by them um, so when I was 17 I had them removed and I had the option of getting a brace before getting them removed or having a bridge done to uh, fill in the gaps and things but in the meantime, I chose the bridge, but in the meantime, I had to wear temporary uh, pallets with teeth on. So a temporary denture with like two teeth. So two teeth or four teeth? I think it was four teeth on either side. So they would have gone there. Now, this was, what, early 90s? So not that I knew of, there was there any such thing as fixident like I use now. I mean... There may have been, but obviously it was always advertised to older people, so it wasn't something that we used. And for the, unless I, you know, for the most part, it was fine. Anyway, so I was on a, I think it was the second date. The first date we'd met was like for literally half an hour or whatever. It wasn't for long. So the second date, because uh, he couldn't stay, I think he had work or something. The second day, um, we decided to go down the beach, go for a stroll along the beach. So it was like evening-ish, six, but it was light night, so it was like summer. So anyway, walking along the beach, walking along the seafront, um, and we comes up to the top, and we're going along that part to where all the like amusements are and things. And there's a road just before Morrison's is on the other side. And we both spotted a friend of ours called Nicola, right? So he starts to shout at her. So I joined in shouting at her. And in my in shouting at her, I spat my teeth palette out of my mouth into the middle of the road. Which, like, was just... I was like horrified you know because I you know when something goes in slow motion but there's nothing you can do so it was like slow motion how I could see it just sort of slowly disappearing going over towards the road and I was just like getting more and more horrified at the thought and I looked at him and he was just distraught like I've never seen anyone look so 
like sort of it was kind of like a dis disgusted distraught looking thing it was weird he was like proper you know weirded out anyway we stopped shouting at her she, she hadn't heard of us any she hadn't heard us anyway because she was that bit too far away and we'd stop shouting and i like had to go into the middle of the road pick up my teeth off the road wipe them on my top and put them back in my mouth because i had no other way of like doing anything and like i spun round and i just sort of kept my head down because i didn't really want to look at him and then i like looked up and he was still kind of doing that horrible horrified sort of disgusted face um and then like we just walked a few steps further like back the way we'd been and then he just went uh uh i've got to go up my brothers because i said i would help him okay and then i went okay and that was it <laughs> that was it never saw him again but yeah <laughs> horrified to say the least <laughs> But it's funny now, but at the time I was absolutely distraught, like, you know, devastated, like, again, just thinking everyone's going to know and all that sort of thing. Um, and I think, you know, back then when you just, you, f you feel like horrified about something, it's so real that it's like so intense and, but again, it was never as bad as um, my brain thought it would have been. Um, yeah. So next time, next one, I was in my early 20s. Yeah, I was in my early 20s and I had, I was on a blind date basically. I was going on a blind date. My friends, a few of my friends had decided that me and this, this lad that they knew would go on a blind date because we both shared the same birthday different years but the same birth date so we're both born on the 20th of june and i don't know why that was a good decision to go on a date but apparently it was we're both single obviously so we met we'll, we'll go into the pictures but just before we met at the pub near the pictures so uh we met up obviously i was so nervous but like i'd, I'd wore a dress and everything and I had my hair up and i was so nervous probably a bit overdressed for the pictures like but still <laughs> um so like i said I was, I was i was so nervous and we met but we got on like a house on fire absolutely like you know by the time we walked from the pub to um the by the time we walked from the pub to the cinema he'd put his arm out for us to link him so we kind of linked arms going to the pub uh, to the cinema sorry and in the cinema upstairs is like a drinking part so we'd gone up there first because it was a while with, before the film was due um, and we drank our drink and then we came back down and then we were just chatting I think there was five minutes left before you could go in or whatever so we were just chatting and I was leaning against the, the big billboard poster thing in the set in inside the cinema. So I was leaning against that and he was standing in front of us and we were just chatting and whatever. And then there's that sort of moment where nobody speaks and there's just that silence and he was staring at me and so I was staring at him and then I started to think to myself, Oh my god, he's gonna kiss us. So I was like He's gonna kiss us any minute he's gonna kiss us any minute and then he didn't and i was getting oh my god i'm staring at him and i just look like an idiot now so i went uh, in my brain i was like point to something and just go over there and so <laughs> i did i kind of went oh look at that and then pointed and started walking that way just as i did he leaned into kisses and headbutted the wall behind us the billboard so yeah <laughs> it didn't didn't quite go to plan but he probably tried to style it out and I was like, I obviously I'd seen this and was like, oh my God, like, you know, um, and he probably tried, tried to style it out by kind of put, put, putting one arm out and sort of like going around like he meant to do that, you know what I mean? It was, it was so funny. Um, and then um, he just went, oh, um, it's starting to go in kind of thing. So we just we went in. But yeah, 
Um, I've seen him a few times after that, not not in a sort of date and respect, but as like a group of friends. We we still got on, but it just I don't think it was it was meant to be after that. I don't know whether he became too shy, and uh, I would never make the first move. I don't think I dropped every billion hint in the world, but you know what blogs are like. But I would never make the first move. I don't know if it's like an old-fashioned thing or something, but maybe now I would. But back then. Like, no. Anyway, <laughs> moving on for that one. Um, so this happened, this next one happened about two years ago. So yeah, two years ago-ish. So I had to go in the hospital for an appointment to do with my niece. Anyway, um, they took me on an ambulance stretcher. Um, I got pad slided off my bed. This was before the hoist. I had the hoist. So I was pad slided off my bed onto the stretcher. Now my legs are pretty bored. So when I'm sitting down, my legs are bored. Um, at least sitting down on the bed. You know. Um, and <laughs> so the, tr the, the stretchers are kind of like diamond shaped. They like go out in the middle and thingy. Where it caused my legs like stick off the sides a bit. So they put all the straps on and pull us in and everything. Anyway, we goes we goes to the um, hospital and the rooms where you you go in. You what are they called? The rooms waiting rooms where you get seen. I forgot what they called. My brain's not working. Um, so they're not very big. So it was like me. It was the doctor, the nurse two ambulance drivers um, and obviously me on the trolley on the stretcher and anyway the doctor wanted to examine my knees and everything so he like unstrapped the bottom strap on the stretcher he did all his exam and everything and he said right you can go now so there wasn't much space between the door and so the door was shut obviously because I was in here so there wasn't much space between the door and my my legs kind of thing in the stretcher so the guy on this side the ambulance driver on this side who was out of the way against the wall he was pulling it over the thing and the other guy who was on this side he had to get the other um, strap to put it back together so he was passing him the strap he pulled it tight kind of thing and then he needed to <laughs> squeeze past the bottom of the trolley so that he could um, open the doors fully so I'm trying to pull my leg in and he's like pulling it with the strap and then he leaves, leaves go just as the other guy is going past the bottom of the trolley with where my foot is and my foot just springs out and I literally poked him in the penis like proper full on with me big toe right <laughs> jabbed him <laughs> big toe in the penis and um i was like mortified absolutely mortified i was like oh my god i'm so sorry i'm so sorry like that i was like i'm so sorry i was like oh my god and he was like that's yeah, all right it's the most fun i've had in ages but i was like just proper horrified like obviously you know it just sprung back out and right at that moment just only could happen to me like it only could happen to me i remember posting it on my facebook uh wall telling people like my friends and stuff what had happened and like a few of my friends were like oh you did it on purpose didn't you you did it on purpose and i was like no because i want to use my hand <laughs> if he was nice obviously i'm only kidding honest <laughs> but yeah um that was another one um i seen him a while later but he was fine <laughs> I didn't give him lasting injuries or anything but I li literally proper like, dumped him with it <laughs> okay so the last one is from I think this was about a year ago maybe 18 months yeah maybe a year maybe 14 months or something I don't know anyway back then I am um, I'd injured my shoulder, I'd injured my right shoulder. 
and I literally could not move my arm not nothing I could barely lift a finger up and that was so painful I remember I had anything like it like that I just could not lift it it was horrible um anyway after speaking to my GP about it he wanted us to have an x-ray done although I didn't think I'd done any damage I couldn't see how I had hadn't fell or anything he said well we'll, we'll get we'll send you to hospital for an x-ray so that's what he did he requested an ambulance to take us to the hospital so ambulance came now I hadn't been able to put a bra on I had like a little t-shirt nightly on um, and I couldn't get changed because I just couldn't lift my arm or anything and I was literally like I was leaning on this side so as not to hurt my arm so I was like stuck on my left side so when the tra uh, pad slided as well, you know, so this side was against the wall and plus I was a little bit further lying down rather than uh, sitting up as I am here now but we'll get to the hospital um, and we'll come off the ambulance and that was all fine you know there's one ambulance driver behind pushing the pole things that they have and one pulling the thing in the front um, and as we come off and we turn um, I see that there's a reflective window here like there's uh, on our hospital is a, a complete reflective window as you go in so as we're going in I looked in the reflective window and me booby was flipping swinging in the wind hanging off the side of the joint <laughs> and I did not have a clue how on earth I didn't feel it I'll never know I mean all I can assume is the pain in this arm and shoulder was that much that I was just not paying attention but I did not feel colder it did not feel any different and I, I only noticed because of these reflective windows and I'm thinking to myself oh my god how many people have I flashed me to out on the way here kind of thing obviously the ambulance drivers didn't know anything but they were at the top and the bottom so I'm assuming they didn't see and the only person I remember is that when we, were, when we came off the um, ambulance there was a taxi parked over here with one taxi driver in it who I would have thought would have seen and then when we came around there was like an old couple sitting on the benches just there so I don't know if they had seen but I literally spotted it and was like oh my god I just put my hand down scooped my boob up um, so it was back on the trolley <laughs> and so it tucked my t-shirt nightly under it to, to keep it there but oh my god it could only happen to me I was absolutely horrified I was like <gasps> like that I was like oh my god how did I not feel that it's like a flipping tennis ball in a tight hanging off the side of the the trolley <laughs> it just whacked people with it as we were going by <laughs> but yeah that's um that's one of my how many stories have I told you one two three four five six seven seven i think um we're already on 30 minutes although i think there's a couple of bits to cut out where i just lost my brain for most of it <laughs> um but thank you very much for watching i hope it gives you a bit of a laugh at my expense which is completely fine because it's all very funny now and it was a long time ago i well got over it <laughs> um but Thank you so much um, and I will catch you next time. Bye bye.